So you're in the market for some more storage space, but confused about what to go for. And the more you look, the more technical jargon you see, and it all ends up getting a bit much. PCIe 4, PCIe 5, megabytes per second, what does it all actually mean? Well, thankfully, Crucial have a huge range of SSDs, and I'm gonna use a couple now to demonstrate what the differences are as simply as possible, and hopefully help you determine which might be the best suited to you and your use case. So let's meet our models, shall we? Kicking things off and representing PCIe 4, we've got the Crucial T500. This particular one is a two terabyte model with a heat sink, though these are also available in capacities ranging from 500 gigabytes up to two terabytes and available with or without that heat sink. Next up, we've got the Crucial T705 PCIe 5 SSD. Again, this one is a two terabyte version, but this time without a heat sink. Capacities are different to the T500, however, as these start at one terabyte and rise all the way up to a whopping four terabytes. And you can also get these with a heat sink should you need it. Although if you're gonna be using it in a laptop, for example, without the heat sink is a better option for compatibility. So what is the difference between the two? Well, PCIe 4 uses a technically last generation backbone to transfer data between the drive and the rest of the system which has the effect of having a maximum transfer speed of around 7,000 megabytes per second for read speeds and around 5,000 megabytes per second for writes, which means in theory that a 50 gigabyte file would take around 10 seconds to move from one PCIe 4 drive to another. Now, for most people, PCIe 4 will be more than fast enough for day-to-day -day usage. The PS5, for example, can take a PCIe 4 SSD to expand the internal storage, and the T500 that we've got here, you can see on the box that it's compatible with the PlayStation 5 as it meets the requirements that they set out, including having that heat sink and the speeds that it needs to work smoothly. Moving on now to PCIe 5, and this is the latest gen, the new kid on the block, so to speak, and uses the newer standard of PCI being, you guessed it, 5. This equates to double the theoretical bandwidth over Gen 4, with read speeds of over 14,000 megabytes per second and writes being over 12,000 megabytes per second. This is a fairly new standard though, so the compatible products are somewhat limited at this moment in time. Although, if you do have a Gen 5 equipped motherboard, you're able to make use of this additional speed. For example, those who work with large video files or maybe transfer larger files regularly will see a benefit from those rapid Gen 5 speeds. It is worth mentioning here though that transfers are only gonna be as quick as the slowest drive in the chain, so to speak. So if you're moving a huge video file from a Gen 5 SSD over to a hard drive, you're not gonna see the benefit of that faster drive. So that is worth keeping in mind. The speed is reliant on both sides, what you're transferring from and what it's going to. For the majority of users though, as we say, Gen 4 is gonna be more than good enough for you for day-to-day -day use, as I said a little earlier. So hopefully that helps clear things up a little. Are you in the market for a Gen 5 SSD though? If so, what are you gonna be using it for? Do leave us a comment below, and if you liked this video and it's helped you, hit the like button to let us know, and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with our latest videos. Linked in the description are all the drives that we mentioned in this video, along with other brilliant, crucial SSDs, all available now at scan.co.uk.